with everyone here, I'll call the meeting to order at 9.05 a.m. Um, prior to doing the roll call, just a reminder, please provide your physical location that includes city and county that you are located in. City Attorney John Barr. Mr. Barr. All right, All right. Uh, I'm present and uh, I'm in the city of Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, Michigan. You? City Assessor Courtney Duggar or Courtney Borden now, sorry. Courtney, you'll need to unmute yourself. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, Courtney, you have to say your that you're here and your physical location, including city and county that you're located. Uh, okay, Courtney Borden, um, present, City of Ypsilanti Assessor's Office. Right. And then City Clerk Andrew Helenga, I am here in the City of Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County. Uh, next, we have a general approval. We may have a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Sorry, yes, John Barr, I move to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, now, and that the agenda is now approved, uh, next section is audience participation. If anyone in the attendees list would like to make comment, please uh, indicate by raising your hand. You'll have three minutes to address the commission. Okay, there is one hand raised, um, Steve Wilcoxon, I'll allow them to speak now, and you'll have three minutes. Good morning. Um, having reviewed the, uh, the presentation earlier, um, I think you've done a good job, uh, Clerk Halenga, in terms of setting this up with as minimal changes as possible to meet the requirements that are um, in front of you. So just want to say thanks. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, so we can move on to the, the next section, seeing no other hands raised. Um, and then we'll open the, uh, we'll have a public hearing. Uh, however, first I'm going to do a brief presentation of what the plan is. And then we'll open it up to anyone else that would like to make comments. So obviously this is the, a presentation on the 2021 redistricting process. Um, this will go over just the proposed plan. Um, this is the first piece of the public engagement section. Uh, the state statute, um, there is not currently um, a law um, in how counties or cities are supposed to balance, only that they must balance. Uh, historically, the city has followed the, the same process that the uh, state legislature follows, um, MCL 4.261-1D. That statute requires that each district balance with a 5% deviation of the population. Um, this will be our current uh, ward structure. Um, which was approved at following the 2010 census. Following the 2020 census, the, 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 daddy, the data that was collected uh, put the city of Ypsilanti's population at 20,648. If all three wards were to be balanced evenly, that would be uh, uh, a population of 6,883 in each ward. Uh, a 5% deviation of that would be 345 people. 
and that range of balance would run 6,538 to 7,228. Uh, the goal of this process is really just to um, minimize any disruption in the voting process. Um, it, it appears that the, the public is satisfied with the current structure of awards. However, we want to ensure that they do balance. Following the 2020 census, uh, Ward 1 has a population of 7,002. Ward 2, 7,502. Ward 3, 6,144. So as you can see, it does not meet that range of the 5% deviation. This is how uh, the, the, 2020, the 2020 census is, uh, currently has balance. The, the, uh, they're separated by precinct and it does have the population of each precinct. In the lighter gray uh, uh, numbers there, those are the population of that specific census tract. So the change that we're looking to make will occur really in 2, 4, and 3, 1. Uh, mostly that uh, southern section right there, the population of 726. As you can see, that occurs on uh, Eastern's campus. And it really only includes uh, four student housing halls. So those student housing halls are Phelps, Sellers, Walton, Putnam, and the plan is to shift that population from 2-4-2-3-1, which would provide that balance uh, uh, among the wards. Another thing to keep in mind uh, is the active voter threshold. State law only allows that each voting precinct may have 2,999 active voters. Currently, Ward 3, Precinct 1 only has 1,610 active voters. However, to be on the safe side, we plan on shifting two census tracts from 3-1 to 3-3 to ensure that we maintain that uh, balance and uh, keep under that 2,999 thresholds so that we do not have to split precincts um, uh, between censuses. That proposed change is going to be on the western side of 3-1, um, which is broken down into five census tracts. The two that will be shifting or planning on shifting are the two southernmost tracts, as you can see indicated here. So that is basically our plan. Um, now we can open up the public hearing. Uh, there are currently still only two members of the uh, attendees list. Um, if they would like to make comment, please raise your hand now and we'll have three minutes to address the commission. Seeing no hands raised, are there any questions uh, among the, the commissioners? I don't have any questions, but I have a comment and that is the law indicates that uh, the redistricting should result in uh, districts that are compact and contiguous. I think this plan meets those requirements and appears to me about as fair as you can be. Courtney, anything from you? Uh, no comment. So then being that there's no uh, individuals wishing to participate in the public hearing, um, I would first like to state that uh, there may be questions on why we aren't switching um, the amount of representation. And I would like to say that uh, Article 11 of our city charter, uh, Section 11.02 does require that we have three wards that are equally uh, represented on city council. And then Article 2 of the city charter does indicate that uh, one member from each ward be elected during the even number of years, um, and those will rotate. And then the mayor is elected on the, uh, the year the governor is elected, which is why this commission nor city council has the authority to make those changes. If those changes were to occur, they would have to be done uh, by a charter amendment and a vote of the people. Um, this, uh, th this presentation and this meeting will be posted on our redistricting page, which you can find on our city website, cityofipsilandi.com, um, if anyone would like to view it later. 
Uh, we will be having two other meetings prior to this going to city council at the first meeting in January. Uh, the next meeting will be on Friday, December 10th uh, at 1 p.m. And now I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion, but before I do, I'd like to thank you, Clerk Kalinga, for your work on this. I think it's been very good. So I would move to adjourn the meeting. Um, any support? Support. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, with that, the meeting will adjourn at 9.15 and uh, I'll see you all on Friday, December 10th at 1 p.m. Okay, thank you. Have a good thank day. You, Andrew. you too.